Research. W. Young, 913, 1783. Okay, I was asked on Twitter if I'd play some Sicilians, so uh, I'll definitely try and do that. And now, how am I going to gambit material here? Well, I don't know. Um, let's... See, this just looks like a reverse Mora Gambit almost, because I've given him the, this port, but it's not like I can keep it, uh, or he can keep it. I'm going to just take this pawn back naturally uh, over the course of developing. So again, it's very similar to the last game. I've got control over this d4 square. Um, but I'm going to have to work out a different way to Gambit in this game. Maybe if I castle queenside and then push this g-pawn down the board, I can persuade my opponent to take off the g-pawn. And then I'm going to use this g-file this uh, g -file to attack his king. So, okay. Three steps here. I'm going to go g5. My opponent's going to take the pawn off. So, step number two is I'll place a rook on the g-line. And step number three is I'll mate him on g2. So let's see if we can manage that. Step 1, go g5. Step 2, put rook on g8. Step 3, mate on g2. Okay, so here we go with step 1. Now, this, the rest of the steps do kind of rely on my opponent taking this pawn off. But if he doesn't, then happy days. I've uh, successfully uh, got some pawns storming down the board with gain of time. Okay, he wants to take this second pawn. And I'm not really certain that I want to let him have that as well. Uh, no, let's let him have that as well. It is the Gambit special after all, so you can have that pawn. But with every pawn that he takes, I gain another open line. Okay, he's gone knight to e4. Instead of going after this pawn, what my opponent wants to do is uh, play knight f6 and win an exchange. So let's distract my opponent here with queen h3. So I've got step 1. Give up the pawn. Step two, take the g file. Step three, mate him on g2. Well, if he doesn't mate, if he doesn't spot the threat of queen takes g2 mate, then I've managed all three steps already. But unfortunately, my opponent does spot that threat and uh, goes pawn to g3. I'm not too surprised about that, but he has weakened a few squares. Look now, that square on f3 in particular looks juicy. So I'm going to put this knight on d4 and keep an eye on that square. One plan here is to go knight f5 knight h4, and then really uh, stick a knight on uh, f3. Because at the moment he's got it protected from his queen on d1. But what else can he use to protect the f3 square? Well, the answer is not a lot. Uh, so a knight arriving on h4 would be really bad news for my opponent here. So I'm going to carry on with this plan. Another advantage of a knight arriving on this square is that I'm threatening mate on g2. For example, bishop takes d4 looks like a really sensible move here. But what happens if I simply ignore it and play knight to h4 anyway? Well, uh, how does he stop mate with queen g2? I actually don't see a very realistic way. Okay, so he's gone... Uh, he's gone... Knight g5. That, of course, hits my queen and prevents my plan for the time being. So I'm going to carry on in my sacrificial theme, giving up the exchange here, and now bringing a second rook to this g-line, which I opened up with g5 earlier on. Now, he should probably get a f6 with the bishop, because if he goes anywhere else, the knight is going to h4, and, uh, oh, okay, that's quite a clever move for my opponent. He's played uh, knight e4. Not only, not only does this uh, defend the bishop, but it also hits my bishop on d6. And I'm very impressed with the way my opponent's handling this so far. Uh, I'm starting to worry that, uh, that this game could just go horribly wrong. Uh, I'm not actually certain what the solution to this is. Okay, I'm going to go h6. Hit the bishop. Try and distract it. Move it away. I was worried that if I played something like bishop c7, he would have time to go c3. Force this knight away from d4. And bye-bye my attack. Uh, one of the things, when you've given up material and you've gambited so much, you often can't afford to go back. Um, 
Because uh, if your opponent's given any time to gather their thoughts, to gather their pieces, then they've just got more pieces than you do. But here, I'm finally going to get this F3 square. I've been gunning it for a long time. Oh, okay, my plan was to go G4 and then Knight F3. But my opponent has again been very tenacious, and he's driving my Knight away. Okay, if I go Rook H8, takes Queen, takes King there. And then Queen check, and then Rook check. It's not quite mating. Hmm. Queen rook takes, queen takes king, pawn. That looks very dangerous. Let me try that. I'm going to carry on gambiting material. So I'm going to say to my opponent here, have yourself a very merry knight on d4. And I'm going to go g4 here. And the plan is to go queen takes h2 check. And then mate him with some combination of moves. Uh, it was probably not a very good idea, but my opponent's down to less than 10 seconds. We might need to come back and have a look at this in a second. Uh, Rook goes across to e8, and now Queen h1 is almost unstoppable. Oh, but not quite. My opponent yet again finds the only move to stay in the game. Um, but he's down to only a couple of seconds. Oh, there goes his uh, Rook. That's a bit unfortunate. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be game over. If queen goes back to e2, then rook c2. A distraction move to drive the queen, uh, king away. And that is going to be game over. It is mate in a couple of moves. In any case, for example, king b4, queen c4 check. If the king goes to a5, then queen b5 is mate. And more aesthetically pleasing, king a3 is met with knight b5 checkmate. So, I'm going to offer my opponent a rematch. Um and see how it goes. So what am I going to play next? Uh, let's try another e4 game. And a king's gambit. Another very, very standard gambit here. Uh, let's see if this time I can persuade my opponent to take it off. Okay, and I'm going to follow it up with bishop c4. Quite a fun line. Because of course my opponent can prevent me from castling here with queen to h4 check. But then the idea is you just tuck your king over to f1 and now you say well look at that queen it's a very exposed piece um because uh, of course you're not supposed to bring your queen out this early in the in the game but uh by playing this opening i've tempted my opponent into doing so by saying well hey look check my king and uh you know it's fine bring your queen out but now look i've got three pieces developed um and you only have one, and your queen is still a big target. Uh, when you're gambiting, uh, you really want to be getting a lead in development. Because otherwise, why are you doing it? I mean, I guess the alternative reason would be um, just to weaken your opponent's king position, or for some long-term positional consideration. But on hack attack, we're not interested in those kind of, you know, uh, high-level concepts. What we're off after tonight is ways of giving up material and having fun um okay i want to go g3 but i've just noticed he's got queen h3 check so that slightly scuppers that so i'm going to bring my knight back around in order to help me take this f4 pawn off if he goes g5 to try and hold on to it then he's opening his king up to a whole uh, world of hurt after I play h4 and undermine his kingside pawn structure. So the only way for him to safely cover f4 at the moment is with bishop d6. But wait a second, that's not safe after all. I've got a sneaky little fork with pawn up to e5. So, oh wait, I did overlook this possibility of knight to... Uh, h5 but wait a second i play g4 here it looks like a ridiculous move but he of course can't take en passant because bishop takes queen would be game over and uh, if he moves his knight back to f6 i could try g5 but uh, then there's queen h3 check so more dangerous is maybe to recapture with either the bishop or the knight i will have a think about that uh, just going to have a sip of my drink while my, I wait for my opponent to play his move. I don't see much of an alternative apart from knight f6. Of course you could play something like d5. Actually, d5 is an excellent move. Counter-attacking. There was no way to defend against all the threats, but this, uh, this does solve his problem. But okay, knight there is interesting. His point is that he's now going to follow up with this queen check. 
but his queen is quite close to being trapped here. Can I go king g1, pawn takes there, knight g5? Okay, then he takes on h2 with check. Ooh, this is interesting. Um, I think I'm just going to have to play this. It's not quite as convincing as I was hoping. I've not won any material. But uh, we're having some fun. Uh, at least I think I'm having some fun. Ooh, here's an idea. Queen takes there. Can I play rook takes h7? Idea, king takes h7, knight g5 check. Well, let's go for it. Uh, if he doesn't take it off, then I can swing the queen across to h1. And then rook to h8, mate, is uh, in the air. Ah, I always knew the king's gambit was a good opening. I mean, this is hardly the uh, the immortal game, but uh, but it's proving to be some fun in any case. I mean, we're only 13 moves in, and we've reached a ridiculous position. My opponent is down to only 30 seconds left on the clock. Uh, so, how is he going to defend here? So the point is, again, if king takes rook, I can go knight g5 check. Uh, if the king moves away, then queen takes that. So d5, bishop defends the queen. Clever idea. So bishop takes d5 would be a big mistake. Because if king takes h7 and the queen's defended. But let me just swing my queen across. And look, there's that mate threat again with rook to h8. The only way I can see him preventing mate is either by going f6, which will lose to bishop takes d5. Or perhaps to go queen h3. But then he's just giving up a queen. And uh, I'm not really certain... That's going to help him too much. Okay, f6 is what he's gone for. And his idea is that if I play bishop takes, he's got um, bishop e6. Um, how are we going to finish this off? Well, bishop takes there. Do we have something cleaner than that? Uh, rook takes doesn't work. King takes queen, king, queen. That doesn't work. Ooh, where's the win here? Queen h5 is interesting. What about rook there and queen h5? Or queen h4? Queen h4 is a nasty move. Here we go. Here's the idea. If queen takes h... Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, my opponent's resigned, but that's because of his lack of time. My idea was to go here and then bishop takes d5 before recapturing. But uh, then he's got king takes rook, and uh, that's rather embarrassing. So I would have to just recapture, and he's actually okay here. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to say good games to my opponent, and uh, yeah.